Hey everybody, welcome to Homecoming, the short film Q&A part one. I'm Tom Hodges, I'm one of the actors and one of the producers of the short, directed and written by Jennifer Blair, the amazing Jennifer Blair. Um, if you have not seen the short yet, please stop this video, go back, watch the short, and then watch this, because there will be spoilers and we don't wanna ruin the short for anyone. There are some fun twists and turns. If you have seen the short, stay with us and here we go. So these questions are questions that we've gotten from the comments. Uh, we've had almost 900,000 views and so many great comments. We figured it was time to give you some answers to your questions. There will be a part two. That's gonna be more about uh, the behind the scenes and how, how the film came to be and uh, questions about that. So these are in no specific order. Let's see what we have. I'm gonna put on my handy spectacles here. Okay, Ken Cran says, can I share it? Well. Ken Cran, of course. I mean, we have no problem with people sharing our short film. And we thank everyone for doing that because we've gotten to almost 900,000 views and that would not have happened without people like you sharing it. Ardeen Schaefer, where can I watch the entire movie? Well, Ardeen, I have some good news. You've seen the entire movie. It's a six minute short film. You've seen the beginning, middle and end and that's all there is to it. Sean Lucero and Alora Medina, they want to know, is that the dude from the movie Heavyweights? It is I. It is Lars. I'm from far away. Yes, I played Lars in Heavyweights, and uh, it's been a while since I've done that accent, so please forgive me for not doing it exactly. But uh, I played Lars, and that was one of my favorite movies. Back in 1994, we shot it, and it was released in 1995. Bam Bam 12. Do they have to find an actor who was really gay? Well, Bam Bam, no. I mean, the point was just to find a good actor, and uh, we didn't really care what their sexuality was. Um, that's the great thing about acting, is you get the chance to play characters who are not exactly the same as you. So we, we happened to cast Spencer, who's amazing, and uh, don't care what his sexuality is. All right, SG80, uh, Jariah92005, and Pierre O'Park all <laughs> mentioned about green tea with milk. <laughs> SG80 says, I'm sorry, did he just say green tea with milk? That's illegal. Uh, yeah, I, I get you. Unsweetened almond milk with and honey? What the hell? Jariah, I get you. And Pierre said, <laughs> who the hell drinks green tea with almond milk? Well, apparently this character did, and uh, I thought it was a great little uh, tip-off that Jennifer decided to add in there, and uh, we, we all got a laugh out of that. Uh, Elsia, Superman 112, Custard Tart, I like that name, uh, Mishlad 24, Arrow to the Knee, Bluez, and Jerry Cortez all seem to notice that my co-star in this short film was Carol from Glee. That's Romy Rosemont. We went to college together and I was so excited to get to work with her because I'd known her for quite a few years and we'd never gotten to actually perform together. And so she was gracious enough to come and help us out with this short. And we thank you humbly, Romy Rosemont, for uh, coming and giving your amazing talents to us. Anna Smoot, why am I laughing when the music comes on? Well, I, I have no idea, but I can tell you that we were so fortunate to get our composer, Ho Ling Tang. Uh, it was, uh, she was someone we'd never actually met. We never actually met her in person, and still, <laughs> all these years later, we've never actually met her. She was referred to us by my amazing friend, Alex Worman, who's a great composer in his own right, and uh, she had helped him out on some projects, and he said, you know, you should give her a, a call, send her an email, see if she'd help you out, and she did. She was just moving back to Hong Kong, and then all the COVID stuff happened. Okay, Lim Wei Min and uh, the sad son, both ask kind of a similar question. So is he? And uh, wait, so he's gay now? I'm confused. Is he or is he not? Yeah, he's gay. And he's, if you haven't seen this yet, spoiler alert, he's a Republican. Yep, we weren't uh, pulling your leg on those. Uh, his character is both gay and a Republican. And yes, those things can coincide at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Pang23 says, what's the hole? Well... I don't want to have to explain that too much. Uh, for people who aren't used to the voting system in the U.S., it used to be that you would punch a hole in your ballot and there'd be the hanging chad that came uh, into question 
back in, when was that? Uh, I don't know, 2000. Now it's a little bit different. You still have holes that you have to push the, the pen in and it makes a mark. And now a lot of them are going electronic. It's, it's amazing how quickly things can uh, date themselves because that joke, which was uh, made sense maybe a few years ago, is a little bit more complicated now, and especially to people who don't live in the United States. So anyway, uh, the whole is related to the ballot that a person would use when they're voting. Um, I'm a fan, the fifth Marauder and TKOS all love the line, gay, 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 or yay, I knew it, gay, 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 let's go call your sister. One of my favorite lines, it was something that we uh, just kind of added and improvised and Jennifer, you know, loved it and so she encouraged it and added a little bit to it herself. Dent Davidson loved the line, a man has his limits. That's one of my favorites too. And then a few people, including Aldo Vesper, mentioned the Obama photo. <laughs> yes, when she put down the picture of Obama, I effing lost it, Aldo said. A lot of people love that. A lot of people commented on that. And uh, I have to say that uh, it was a very subtle little thing that Jennifer came up with. Um, Cam and Gabriel Rodriguez both said their favorite line was, once you figure out what hole to use, and then uh, Carol's line, well, there's not really much of a choice. Two great lines. Uh, I think that Jen knocked it out of the park on that sequence. And then Zen said, I feel like this could be showing how dumb it is for parents to suddenly hate their kids because they're LGBTQ+, or maybe I'm reading into it. Well, I mean, it's not about that. Uh, I think it's a shame when anyone would uh, feel differently about someone who they love because of their sexual preference or gender identity. Um, but it's not necessarily the specific reason why the movie was made. We'll get into that uh, in part two. But, um, you know, the great thing about this short film is that different people see different things in it. And so we don't uh, negate anything that you see in it. Uh, and we just appreciate that you watched it. And we hope to make some more to get you laughing and get you thinking. All right, that's it for part one. Thanks for joining us. And come back for part two.